I'm sorry? First time you met Tom Purcell. Oh, right. Well, what happened was that I had, I had left the voice. I had left the voice and gone over to East Village Other, largely because a girl I had been going out with when I came back from Japan, my book, she was going out with Walter Boart. And I said, well, um, you know, that's okay. Glad you found each other. But, Sherry, you did promise to do the um, singing titogram for me for my column. And the singing titogram was to go to one of those 25 cent photo machines and she'd do three pictures and the fourth picture she'd uncover this French Legionnaire's hat to the exposed breast, you know. So we went along to that and Walter, her new boyfriend, was quite game. And he said, oh, he said, you know, I'm starting a paper. And I said, oh, really, I'll write for you. So I sent him a column and he ran a column in the first issue, Art and Other Scenes. Uh, he dropped it, he called it Just Other Scenes. And um, uh, the voice basically kicked me out. They said, you can't write for other people like that. They were very jealous of a new paper in the East Village, you know. I mean, everybody else was writing. Nat Hentoff was writing for everybody, including the voice. But anyway, the voice basically gave me a choice, either stay here and not write for other people or leave. So after 500 and something columns and 10 years, I just quit, went over to the East Village. And... Um, we sat around one day and realized there were five newspapers. There was the Berkeley Barb, there was the LA Free Press, there was the, um, in Lansing, Michigan, there was the paper. In, uh, in Austin, Texas, there was um, Jeff Shiro's uh, rag, and uh, there was our own paper, these for each other. And we thought, well, we've got a syndicate here. You know, what are we going to call it? And we kicked that around for a while and I'd always been impressed by the French Marquis, the underground. And so I, I think I came up with the underground. So we called it the Underground Press Syndicate. And the next thing was what we were going to do. And basically after a few months, Evo just realized they couldn't cope with it and, and handed it over to me and said, you, will you run it? And almost simultaneously, I get this call from Phoenix, from Tom, saying that he has all the underground papers have been following him since the beginning. And could he help? And I said, sure, Tom, let's be partners. Let's open a bank account. We both have to sign the checks. I've already agreed that our income would be, we'll sell UPS subs to Time magazine and people that want to read all the papers. The deal will be that part, partly for joining UPS, you agree to send the papers to everybody else on the list, including people who paid for subscriptions. So the first commit, so, and I said, I would write a newsletter every month and he would uh, print it and send it out. And uh, the first communication I got from him was Phoenix with the bullet holes through it. And then not... Orpheus. Sorry, Forpheus, Orpheus, yes. So not long afterwards, he, um, he came to New York and set up that place on, I believe, West 10th Street, right by the sidewalk. There was always a prominent uh, canister of uh, what's it outside. What is that stuff? I've forgotten now. No, sniffing. Nitrous. Yeah, yeah, nitrous. I always had a kind of, kind of, sort of nitrous outside. And, um, and his tribe and everything. And he, he basically took over UPS. Uh, I was only happy, really happy to have him do that, of course. Uh, and he financed it by going to Bell and Howell and selling the microfilm rights. And, um, there were, and then for a while, oh, and then... I was in Japan when he brought out the first issue of High Time, so I sent him a column from Japan, which I think is in the first issue. Nothing to do with marijuana at all, just a column on Japan. And then when I came back, he put me in the office, and I was, you know, not really doing too much there. I, don't, I can't remember if I wrote or not. I introduced him to Craig Kapitas, uh, and then one day he sent us all down for that um, uh, conference in uh, Washington, you know, a normals conference hired a plane to send us down to Washington. Um, and then once Tom and I were out at um, one of the underground press syndicate things, somewhere in the Midwest, I can't remember where, and he had that huge car with the big thing on the top. And uh, we were driving around and we got stopped by a cop. And the cop, uh, for no reason except the thing was weird, the cop stopped us. And the cop asked Tom for his license, and Tom said he didn't have it with him. And the cop said, oh, well, how about some identification? And the 
Tom denied having anything, and this went on for a while, and Tom absolutely refused to cooper cooperate with this cop in any way whatsoever, and the cop finally, in desperation, just let us go.